Howdy, how you do cousins, ladies and gentlemen, I am Rusty, and I'm a full-time reseller on online platforms like eBay and Etsy and others, and man, it has been a crazy few months. We've come across gobs, I mean just oodles and oodles, of great stuff to buy and resell. And we've made some money here and there, and I wanted to just do a rapid fire video here showing you a variety of things we picked up this year so far, and it's gonna be rapid fire, less than a minute per item, just to kind of show you some um, particular genres, categories, and specific items you can be looking for. I found all, almost all of these, if not all of these, locally. Uh, I do not live in a real high population area, so I guarantee that there's something on this list you could find today and make some money on. So if you want to always be educating yourself and adding your arsenal, this is the video for you. Stay tuned. Good luck out there. Godspeed, friends. <laughs> Hey friends, it's Rusty here. How to? I got a bunch of stuff to show you. Been out, got a lot of different things. We're going to throw them up in the eBay store. Had a little quick vacation. Now it's time to get back to brass tacks. Take a look at some of this stuff that I picked up this week. I'm going to throw in the eBay store. Let's have some fun here, shall we? two cousins it's rusty i'm back from my vacation and i went out today to a thrift store to just get back into it and man i came across a bunch of goodies this uh old two box here full of junk in it i'm gonna sort through this one as well all kinds of stuff then they had this thing of bakugan uh cards and then this thing is full of bakugans uh, i'm not really sure the ages or any of that so even some loose ones hanging out here. And then this jar here of old antique skeleton keys and various other keys. There are a lot of them are labeled. So that'll make it easy for me to look up. $175 for all this. You might think that sounds like a lot. But there's some old vintage screwdrivers and, and tools down in here. One of those hand crank drills. Uh, along with uh, this stuff. Uh, I, I expect to double my money at least on this. So let's get into it soon. How to cousins. Rusty here. I'm in the middle of sorting out these matchbooks. And I've got a bunch of them that'll be listed today. In some cases, I'm doing small lots. In some cases, I'm doing individuals. Here's one that's individual I'm going to be doing. It's a Coney Island. I've done real well. I sold one for $92, if you can believe it. It was different than this. But then I got some from the World's Fair. I got ones that are having to do with Hitler. This one you scratch on his rear end there in order to light it. Here's stuff from Harvard, Princeton. These are all from the vintage uh, 1930s, 20s through 40s. Got some football players, baseball hockey these are old clubs various clubs this right here is old uh political ones uh people running for offices and local places and then some old ones from the 1930s of various uh, attractions like niagara falls and such but i'm going to be getting these up in the store keep a lookout Hey guys, it's Rusty. Another thing to be on the lookout for is old vintage cutlery, particularly ones that have really nice handles. These are made of bone. This is like deer antler. All of these are that way. They're older ones. Uh, and so these, this one does not necessarily go with the set, but these all come from roughly the same set or similar ones. And uh, for a buck a piece on these, uh, generally, real great. I'll sell these for four to five bucks a piece. Probably sell this lot for 20 to $30 uh, real easily. So keep a lookout for this stuff. You wouldn't think it. Keep a lookout on there. See if you can find the names. Do your research. And you might come across something quite valuable. How to how you do, cousins. Rusty here. Another thing to look out for, guys, is old trade cards, particularly ones of, of uh, you know, sports ones we know about. Baseball, hockey, basketball, those kinds of things. But a lot of people don't realize that they were making all kinds of trade cards of things that were non-sports related. And here are several books that I came across today. The Will, Wills. Uh, Wills's uh, trade cards. And these are uh, household items. Right? Bugs. They're working on stuff here, learning how to wash stuff. Really cool. This one here is of flowers, various types of flowers. This one here is, looks like equipment, trains, modes of transportation. And then we got dogs here. And finally, the queen, king and queen of England. Stuff here with old uh, people from back in the day, guys. Um, really cool stuff. I'm going to sell this for a large man. Hey, cousins, this is Rusty here. Guys, I came across this lot of something called Notgeld. And I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced. Notgeld. It's German. That's all I know. And it's from the 1920s, guys. This is 
when during World War One, whenever uh, there was a shortage of paper um, currency, different uh, businesses and establishments made their own currency. That's right. It was not backed by their government, but it was essentially like a coupon or like a gift card to their establishment. And it was worth a certain amount of Funsvig or whatever you call it here. Uh, Phoenix. Uh, there's 50s, there's 75s, but basically it was like use this when you come uh, to our establishment. And this represents a value. And there's all kinds of different ones, guys, different sizes, different values from different places. And, guys, this is the 1920s. So it is an absolutely incredible uh, as far as the actual, uh, you know, the, the printing and how it looks. It's gorgeous, guys. It's, it's awesome. So, anyhow, uh, I got this lot here, guys. And I'm going to sell this on eBay. This is not something I've, I've only come across this one time. Uh, but if you come across something like this, guys, please grab it because they can sell for decent money. Just depending on what you spend on it, uh, you can find uh, some things you can really make some good money in. They're just, they're super cool, just bottom line. So keep a lookout, do your research, guys, but uh, happy hunting out there. Stage one here, guys, of uh, going through and listing some stuff that has just been sitting around on eBay is all this corning where you can see all these leads, you can see the, uh, the blue... Uh, the cornflower blue ones there you can see I if i can show you down here the spice of life set uh these things it's so hard to know sometimes they sell for a ton sometimes just a little bit but i got so much here i'm going to list these in lots two different lots so uh take a look if you are not aware that corning ware uh from corning uh new york can sell for a good amount of money so take a look for that Next up, folks, in the groupings of stuff that I've got that I need to get up on eBay. This has been sitting around for a while. It's a small collection of tools, some vintage tools. We've got some some different, uh, uh, just a variety of different types of hand tools. We've got some hammers here, guys. We've got some tin snips right here. Uh, we've got uh, an old hacksaw here and a variety of little stuff. I'm going to do probably four or five different lots out of this. Uh, I'm going to throw up on, up on eBay several of these wrenches and stuff I'll put together, uh, maybe in lots of four or five, and just see how they do. Time to list some more matchbooks, guys. I had that huge lot, and I'm still going through them. I'm going to do a few lots today of these pinup girls, as you can see here. Um, some old ones, some, some well, they're all old, but some really old ones versus some uh, just sort of old ones. Uh, 30s through the 60s, I would say. Then I got a giant lot of alcohol-related ones. Some are liquor, some are beer. I'm going to put these up in lots of four a piece and just kind of see how they do. I'm thinking around 10 bucks for a lot. Uh, and I probably could do 20 or 30 lots out of this. And then we got all these old uh, vintage soda ones. Various sodas here. We got old Pepsi, old 7-Up, and old Coca-Cola. I think it'll do real well. Got another nice large lot here, guys. This is all premium costume jewelry. What do I mean by premium? Well, I mean that every piece in here has a maker on it. We're talking Trafari, Coro, Kramer. Um, we got, uh, you know, a variety of Weiss. Uh, and, and vintage pieces here. Some are sets. We got like earrings and bracelets. A lot of vintage brooches with just gorgeous stones in them. Um, necklaces in here. I mean, I've got probably, if I was doing these individually, uh, probably 150 different uh, items or sets of items here. I'm going to do small lots of uh, like named uh, designers. And we're just going to see how they do. Guys, costume jewelry can sell for really good money. Do your research. Know the best brands. Still going through, guys, to find stuff that's been sort of, not a dead pile, but just stuff that wasn't going to sell for tons of money, so they got pushed to the side, but now it is time. I got a whole lot of old VHS tapes, some of these Disney classics, Goonies, some of these others from like the 80s and 90s. Um, really good, uh, like blockbuster uh, movies here, as you can see, lots of Star Wars stuff, Office Space, Lord of the Rings, E.T., some really good ones here. Usual Suspects, lots of these, uh, look at this, we got uh, the making of Star Wars from the Jedi, the Matrix, good stuff, guys. Uh, I'm, I haven't decided, I think I'll do lots of maybe four or five a piece and just kind of see how they do. Here's my gigantic lot of costume jewelry. I had roughly 80 pounds. I couldn't sell 80 pounds. No one wanted to buy it. So what I did was I took these uh, large uh, plastic. I got a container, uh, a roll where I can just kind of make bags out of them. 
And what I did is I divided it in four lots, 20 pounds each. I listed it for 50 bucks with $25 shipping. And within the first night, I'd sold all four of them. So I've got 80 pounds of jewelry. I got to go ship off soon. Uh, this is stuff that I get from Goodwill, real cheap. I sift through it, find uh, good uh, costume jewelry, good brand stuff that's made out of either gold or silver. I pull that out, sell individually, and then I resell these bags. Uh, I'm going to sell all of these and make all my money back from my initial investment. And then all the stuff I pulled out, the good stuff, that's really where I'm making money. Riding a road bicycle. Um, these are women's size 7.8, but they are in pristine condition. Looks like they've maybe only been used one time. I can't say brand new because they are not brand new, but I'm just going to put uh, barely used in excellent condition. I paid uh, only... Uh, $4.50 for these. And I think I can get $50 out of this because of what a great condition they are. So never pass these by. Uh, even ones in rough condition, depending on the brand and uh, the type, can sell for good money. So keep a lookout for this stuff while you're outsourcing. Rusty here at the Rusty How To YouTube channel. Guys, I want to show you something that I bought in this little grab bag for $2.50. It's silver plate silverware. And I know what you're thinking, guys. You're thinking silver plate stuff. It's not worth anything. Only sterling silver stuff can be worth something. Well, uh, that's not necessarily true. Some people have uh, almost complete sets. Maybe something got lost. Maybe something got damaged and they need one piece. Also, other people, they'll take these, they'll polish them up and make them look really nice, resell them for more money, uh, or they just collect certain things. Um, certain ones, particularly ones that have some sort of a name or a logo, maybe it came from an airline or a particular type of hotel or something, on the bottoms of these, those things can be very valuable. Uh, also, ones uh, from certain uh, time periods or certain makers, a lot of times they're stamped on the back or like that. You can kind of see. Um, look for this stuff, guys. If you can get it super cheap, it may be worth it. Something to look out for, guys, when you're outsourcing are model uh, cars, planes, and trains. This one is uh, obviously uh, an airplane. Uh, it's got the Texaco, uh, you know, sticker there on it. So this was, uh, I don't know if this was a particular uh one, uh, I'm sure this says right here that it is a Texaco licensed product. And so that's pretty cool. This thing is almost like a die cast thing. It's, it's made of metal, so it's quite heavy. It's called the Sky Chief. Um, the propeller works there. I'm not sure um, exactly what this was made for, but uh, it's got, it seems to have all the components there. Uh, I bought this thing for just $1. I know I can probably make $10, $20 on this. Uh, don't pass these things by collectors like these, you know, smaller versions uh these one one twelfth, one twentieth, one twenty fourth size uh, items. Maybe they rode in a plane like this, or flew one, and they want a little model of it. Hey guys, this is a new installment of Be on the Lookout for, and that would be. We've already talked about regular trolls. There, you can get the vintage ones back in the sixties and seventies, but even newer ones like this. These particular ones are of the uh, the pencil topper variety, and uh, what that means is that you take a pencil and you stick that on the end of it, and you'd have this little funny, silly thing to play with uh you know to distract you uh from your schoolwork and what the teacher was saying and sometimes these are actually made of eraser material as well here's one with the mask and it's a halloween themed one i'm sure that one will sell decently no joke you can pull these out and sell them individually or you could sell them in little lots like a little lot like this where you can put them all together and sell a big lot just a matter of how quickly uh you need your money back and uh that sort of thing so if you pass these by don't think that they're worthless people actually collect these troll things so Keep a lookout for this stuff. How to cousins. Guys, here's some stuff to keep a lookout for. A lot of times you can find these and grab bags like this, and that is Barbie or similar type of uh, doll clothing. The clothing oftentimes will sell for more than the dolls themselves. And you can see some in here, these kind of corduroy that's either made to look like a retro piece or it is an authentic piece from the 60s or 70s. Um, there's several in here. Uh, these bags cost me $4.95. That was kind of a gamble, but uh, I sell bags this size routinely for $10 and up. Sometimes you can get $20 or $30 for those. You can find these at yard sales, estate sales, rummage sales for sometimes $0.50 cents a bag, uh, sometimes a dollar. But uh, don't pass this stuff up. Uh, the clothing itself, you could even parse it out and sell individual outfits for a few bucks a piece and really make good money on it. So don't pass those by. When you're outsourcing at Goodwills or thrift stores or even at yard sales and stuff, 
keep a special lookout for Star Wars related stuff. Star Wars guys is still super hot. Tons of people collect this stuff. Stuff that was made back in the 2000s is now considered vintage. And so a lot of times you can pick this stuff up for real cheap and it can actually turn a really good profit. This right here is a, an example of a, um, a Millennium Falcon. And if you open this sucker up, you can put little guys down in here. You got the Dejarit game. Uh, there's spots for them. You know, there's little places down in here for them to hide. Um, you can put a little character in here. Um, just really fun stuff, guys. And I picked this thing up for just four bucks. And, you know, it's only selling for about $20 online. But again, that's not, you know, you make money on it. This is not an R2-D2, but it's some sort of droid. I'm not quite sure what it does. I haven't messed with it a whole lot yet. But I picked that up for a dollar. I'm telling you right now, if I put this up, I could sell it today. <music> Not, not believe me, folks, but uh, you should definitely keep a lookout for vintage pencils and uh, ink pens. Uh, fountain pens sell really well. Sometimes the components on them are made of gold or uh, gold filled. And then you've got some of these uh, awesome uh, mechanical pencils and ink pens that have a good collector base. I was out in southwest Missouri doing some sourcing. I came across five of these, and this was in the uh, Joplin, Missouri area. And it says, four state supply, Carthage and Joplin, Missouri. So these were made by a manufacturer in that area. They're really nice. Still got lead in them. And someone will collect these. I absolutely know it. You got these other little ink pens here different advertisements locally and then you got these that are real cool where you click them and it makes a message in here it changes it says time to change go all electric people collect these kind of roller clicker ones here from different advertisements of small towns keep a lookout for these they can get big money. how to cousins today we're going to talk real briefly about uh cars and uh, different vehicles that are based off of Disney or Pixar movies. So in this case, this is from the the you know the movie series Cars. And if you push the I button here, this is Mater. And you got this uh, this nice uh, you know car here. It's great condition. It's got batteries. Things you know, I recently sold uh, uh, some stuff from Toy Story. Those sell really well. But if you can find ones that have the name of the character on them and they're in good condition, whether they make noise or not, there's a collector base for all kinds of toys that are based on these particular series of movies. Because kids love them, and then the parents want to get uh, you know toys that go along with the movies that they like. They can sell for real good money. I paid fifty cents for this, and I'm probably going to sell it for fifteen to twenty dollars on eBay. Hey cousins, it's Rusty. Wanted to show you this. I picked this up at a thrift store recently. It's nice. It's from probably the 40s or 50s. Uh, a nice little hatchet. I could sharpen this up, make it really nice. It's got this leather bound handle. Uh, vintage blade, uh, you know, vintage tools that have blades on them. Those being hatchets or draw knives. Um, Things like that can sell for really, really good money. They're functional, obviously. They can be resharpened and reused for a long time, but uh, and they have a variety of uses, and they've got a big collector base. So something like this, if you ever find a vintage tomahawk, it looks like a hatchet, but it's a little bit longer and wide. Look those up. They sell for insane monies, guys. So back then, they just made stuff to last. It's really good quality stuff. And uh, so keep a lookout for these. If you can get them for a small enough price, they can resell and bring you some good money. Vintage pairs of scissors look at all of these that i got here sticking out we got scissors for just about every type of task that you might you know need to be doing um got stuff that are for uh sewing we got stuff for for school we got uh you know, some industrial sized ones particularly ones that say that they are made in germany or italy are the ones that sell really, really well. They're made of old steel. These are around World War II or earlier. And especially smaller ones can be worth a whole lot of money. Ones that uh, are made to look like a bird or a stork that's this sh bright, shiny brass color. And look those up. Those are selling for $20, $30 or more. And you can find these at yard sales, uh, places like that for uh, you know, 50 cents a dollar. You can see this one says Germany, made in Germany. Uh, different names, some manufacturers. Keep a lookout. They can bring really good money. Got to how you do. It's rusty here, guys. Keep a lookout for fishing tackle boxes. 
sometimes you're going to find them and they've got a bunch of stuff still inside of them that's even better if you can buy it then you take lots of little things outside of it in the inside and you sell them off individually and then guess what you can sell the box itself uh for money by itself ones that are craftsman brands or some other brands if they're in decent condition can actually bring great money i bought this tackle box i think i paid about 20 dollars for it i knew i could sell this tackle box itself for close to that and inside i got pocket knives i got some old jars and bottles i got some old lures i got a bunch of uh sheet uh, little things here uh with the hooks they're not even rusted they're ready to go they're sealed never been opened and so people will buy these collectors will buy these to go with their fishing gear as well so look for loaded tackle boxes pawn shops are great places for that or yard sales and uh have fun digging through there Something that's real fun is when I can go out and find vintage Nike shoes at thrift stores. Paid $5.50 for these. These are from 2009. So we got 12-year-old uh, Jordan. These are, say, Jordan Flight, Nike uh, Jordan Flights. Size 10 and a half men's. That's a great size, 10 and a half, 11. And they're pretty darn good condition as well. I'll clean them up a little bit. But $5.50, the last pair that sold in this a good condition sold for about $59. So uh, that's a real good flip. And uh, something like this, you know, if it doesn't sell immediately, I always know that it will sell because these are hot and people want the vintage collectible things. Keep a lookout for cheap Jordans, cheap Nike shoes. Shoes. Um, there's a big collector base for this. This is an old, uh, probably from the 60s, early 70s. Uh, it's a Japanese made uh, uh, banjo. It's got a nice little, uh, it's got, it's real good condition. It's got these block inlays. It's got a nice little resonator there with a really cool uh, uh, eagle on the back of that. Uh, nice little five string sucker here, but I think I'm going to throw this up on eBay today. How to how you do cousins. Uh, I've gone ahead and pulled the trigger on this awesome new set of Star Wars Lego helmets, the helmet collection. Uh, we're starting off here, we got the uh, the fighter pilot. That's really cool looking, the TIE fighter pilot. And we got the stormtrooper here, followed by Darth Vader. And then you've got the scout trooper here. I'm missing one. There's five. I'm missing Boba Fett. Couldn't find it at the retail store, so I had a buddy uh, in another place pick me up one, and so that should be coming shortly. And then I'll have all five of them. Uh, whenever I get these things put together and get them up for display, I'll do another video and show you what they look like. But I am super excited to uh, get these all put together. Cousins, check it out. I did it. I went and did it. Jordan 1 mids, red and black and white. Aren't those just slick? I love them. Hey guys, it's Rusty. Uh, kind of along with other stuff that I buy and resell quickly, other things that I buy to hold on to to sell at a later time is whiskey. And uh, this came out uh, just recently, the Alberta Premium Canadian Whiskey Cask Strength Rye Limited Edition. It was $69 at my local uh, uh, liquor store and... This came out in the Whiskey Bible that Jim Murray puts out every year, and he, he rated this as the best whiskey in the world for 2021. So uh, it doesn't mean that it is. It's all a matter of opinion, of course. But uh, when there's an accolade like that given, I like to check it out. So I um, bought one for uh, the warehouse uh, for a collection, and then another one just so I can dip in it and taste and see what all the hubbub's about. Guys, I'm terribly excited about this pair here. This is the brand new Air Jordan 1 Low. All-Star Weekend Carbon Fiber. Got the sweet emblem up on the top. You can see that look. For carbon Fiber. The Air Jordan on the back. Those are just stinking slick. I don't care what anybody says. Um, man, I need to sell them, but I would also love to wear them. Here, but look at these. Or Cybertron. Awesome. We got Magic the Gathering cards, but look at this. I've never seen these before. The world's smallest. It's tiny packs of Magic the Gathering cards. Is that not incredible? Wow. Check out this. Ninja Turtles. It's a foot soldier. These are awesome, but I don't know what they're thinking. $17.99? That's expensive. Over here at Ross, and I found these two things. Each of these sells for about $45 to $50 a piece, plus shipping. I bought two of them for $37. I'm going to try to sell them for $120. We'll see what happens. It's rusty, guys. Look at these. These are St. Laurent sunglasses, aviators. I paid $120 for them. I'm going to sell them for $200.
Today. Another one of these real picture postcards, guys. Uh, this is actually not a, a photograph, so technically it's not real, real uh, photo paper, but it is a postcard. It's from Rotorua, 1929. Rotorua is an area in New Zealand. It says Guide Roof. So this is a Maori woman, um, uh, I believe, there in uh, New Zealand. Just wanted to show you something I got in. Be on the lookout for old scrapbooks. You never know what kind of awesome stuff you're going to find in this. This was from the 1940s during World War II. Uh, I got a bunch of uh, Asian, Japanese primarily, currency that came out of this thing. As well as some old photographs. Uh, black and whites. These are real photos like you would get in real photo postcards. You got some, some of ships and various things. And on the bottom here, guys, this is maybe the coolest thing. Let me see if I can pull this out. It's an old flag. Uh, this is made of some sort of um, linen or some kind of material like this. It's an old uh, Japanese flag uh, from, it says 1945. So I'm going to split all this stuff up and sell it individually. Guys, look for scrapbooks. You can find some great stuff in there. How to how you do, cousins. It's rusty again. Uh, another thing to be on the lookout for, guys, are these old, um, I guess these would be uh, tighteners for uh, old tennis rackets. You put these on. He's got these wing nuts here, as you can see. You put those on the rackets, and it kept them uh, stabilized and kept them from warping. This particular kind here by the, uh, the Dunlop, brand is uh, a little bit more valuable uh you would put it in there and then you would cinch this down and it actually tightens it up um these can sell for 20 or 30 dollars a piece no joke and then these can sometimes sell for five to ten dollars a piece you can sell them individually or in lots and a lot of times you can get tennis rackets that have those on them you split it up you sell the racket by itself and then this uh tensioner thing by itself um so sometimes people will be giving these away or uh you know, if you split them up, you basically make money off of this as well as the racket. So keep an eye out for this kind of thing. Hey, cousins, I know I've talked about it before, but I'm going to say it again. This is the time to do it. Uh, baseball bats. Sports equipment, guys, in the summer sells really well, whether you're going to sell it on Facebook Marketplace or uh, online like eBay or a place like that. But some brands like this uh, Demarini one uh, is going to sell really well for me. I only paid $2 for this. I put it up on eBay, and in the two or three days, I guess maybe been up three days, it's already up to $60. Okay, so, um, you know, and that's with, I think, $12 shipping that they're going to uh, um, add on to that. So uh, keep an eye out for this stuff, guys. This information here uh, will help you know what it's for. And, uh, you know, the drop three there, that indicates uh, the weight of it and uh, who would be using that sort of thing. Never pass up on this stuff, especially if it's in good condition. Cousins, another thing to be looking out for is vintage instrument, and in this case, guitar straps. The Ace brand of guitar straps made in the USA. These were popular in the 60s and 70s. In fact, uh, some well-known artists like the Beatles and Jimi Hendrix uh, used ones like this. A little bit more psychedelic looking. But these, I've got two of them. They're the exact same color and that's because uh, a relative of mine uh, played guitar when I was younger and had one of these straps and I loved it so much. Uh, in that case, it was this part right here was actually like a um, sort of a uh, green color. Uh, they got different uh, colors, different styles, but these things are hand sewn, uh, really awesome, and uh, they can go for big money. This particular one is a pretty sought after one, sometimes fetching over a hundred dollars per. So keep a lookout for these guys. Sometimes you can find them at yard sales for very cheap. Howdy guys, uh, scored another awesome used pair. Uh, in this case, it's the women's Cortez uh, tennis shoes. These are for 2015, uh, but they're just in really, really good condition. I'll just have to do just a tiny bit of cleaning. It looks like they've only been worn maybe once or twice. They were really good on them. Uh, pay four dollars for these at a thrift store, and they're selling anywhere from you know 38 to up to over 50 dollars a pair. So, great little snag for some used Nikes. Always grab uh, used Nikes if they're in good enough condition, uh, because there's such a hot market for these. Uh, I was really glad to grab them. Tony Llamas uh, boots. Well, it doesn't say it on that one. Here we go. I'll show you. There it is. Tony Llama boots. And you can see it on the back, the bottom as well. And they just look slick. You can tell they've never really been worn uh, right here on the heel. Uh, great pair of, uh, of boots. You got this... Um, it's like ostrich. You got these bumpy, this bumpy kind of texture here, but real slick. I haven't looked them up yet, but I expect these are, you know, 60 to $75 probably uh, on eBay. So uh, I'm going to get these thrown up today. No uh, use in waiting. 
Folks, if you've not gone to the clearance section at your local Walmarts and Targets, guys, you need to start doing that because you can sometimes find good stuff. These are these little, uh, they call big time muscle. These are little cars here. You got a, a Camaro and a Corvette, some pretty good, uh, you know, uh, brands of, uh, or models of car, I guess, rather. $3. I look these up on eBay. They're selling anywhere from $10 to $20 a piece. And so I'll probably throw this up in a lot. So I'm, I'm in about $6.50 with tax and I'll sell this for between 20 and 30 bucks. So keep a lookout for these deals. A lot of times they'll have them on toys or things like uh, water filters for refrigerators. It really doesn't matter. Just make sure you do your research and you could come out quite a bit ahead. Two dollars, if you can believe it, guys, at a local Goodwill store. Really, really good shape uh, Solomon, uh, you know, kind of hiking or, or trail shoes here. Uh, I'll have to put a new uh, insert in here for the sole. I would do that anyways, though. Uh, but great condition. I mean, these things would sell for probably... I need to look up this exact model, but I'm guessing $75 to $90 brand new. And uh, I'll sell these obviously used, but really good condition. Probably get about, you know, between $40 and $50 out of them. So really good flip for just uh, $3, 2 to $3. Guys, you should always be on the lookout for stuff to help your business as well as reselling. You guys need tape? If you run out of tape or you break your you know, tape dispenser, it falls off the desk or something, don't go buy a new one. Just go out to Goodwill and look for stuff. This one is the Able number 50. It's a vintage deal. It's got, this is a larger, much larger roll of tape. Um, and uh, I'm going to use this here at my desk. And whenever I don't need it anymore, then I'm going to sell it and make some money on it. Because for $2.50, this is probably a, you know, 15 to $20 vintage uh, tape roller. Tape rollers sell for money? Yes, they do. <laughs> Almost anything you could think of has a collector out there. So do your research and you'll be all right. Vintage gardening tools, guys. This one got a nice little wooden handle. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what this is for. All right, but I know what I'm going to use it for. And this is to dig little holes to plant stuff. Smaller stuff we you got growing from seedlings. Uh, you got some numbers there, 100 down to 25. This is made in Japan, obviously. I've not even looked up the price on this. But for $1, uh, I'm going to use it. And then when I don't need it anymore, I'll sell it. I'm always looking for stuff that I can use around the house as well. I would rather spend, uh, you know, uh, money on something that's good condition that's used and vintage because, uh, you know, they made them better back then. And then also uh, it's retaining its value and I'll be able to sell it. So keep an eye out, guys. Anything that can help you in your business or in your work at home is going to be worth it. Folks, I've done really well with uh, vent, uh, not vintage. Well, I guess this would can be considered a little bit older, but not technically vintage. Uh, does it say the year on there? It does not, but it does say Disney. This is from the Cars uh, movie series. This is, um, uh, you know, it says uh, the Hudson Hornet here, the Piston Cup, um, and. Uh, it's a really cool looking. I've not actually seen this one, but these little cars, these little uh, that have the eyeballs on them and they're you know personified, looking like people, kind of, uh, have sold really well. So I paid about twenty five cents for this. It'll probably sell for eight to ten dollars, believe it or not. That's a real good flip. Not huge money, guys, but when you find lots of things like this regularly, like we do, this is our bread and butter. So don't pass it by just because it's a little toy and you think it might not be worth anything. There are collectors for this kind of thing. How to cousins today. I found a couple of pieces of jewelry here at a, a th local thrift store. This is the Monet brand. It's a nice, heavy, a brightly gold-colored uh, necklace. It says it on the clasp there as well. That's a pretty common costume jewelry brand. Uh, the centerpiece there is not scuffed. It's got all of its rhinestones, so it's a good condition piece. I paid a dollar for it. Probably sell it for $16, $18, maybe a little bit more. And then this little pendant. Looks kind of ugly, kind of uh, dull. Not worth anything, right? Well, if you turn over and look at the back, it says 925 Italy. So this is made in Italy. It is 925 indicates sterling silver so it actually is worth much more than a dollar uh, i could either sell it by itself or i could put it in with a lot of other scrap silver and sell that just for the the silver price of the weight just because it's in the bin with the costume stuff doesn't mean it might not actually have be made of a, a precious or semi-precious metal or semi-precious stones keep a lookout guys i especially like to buy stuff that is has the name on it of the manufacturer cousins many of you guys may not realize it but they sell vinyl records at walmart and vinyl records Records are becoming much uh, more sought after, and there's a big resurgence in the interest in this. Today I bought this album. It's a new Taylor Swift album that just came out of uh, Willow. It is the Green Vinyl Edition, and that means this is a double album, and they're both green color vinyl. I paid $22, nearly $23 for this, but they're selling online for $40 or $50.
So if I put this up uh, for 50 bucks, free shipping, I'm going to make 10 to $15 on this. Yeah, just buying it brand new from uh, Walmart. So don't neglect this, guys. Always pass by that electronics area. Check, check out the electronics, video games, and, of course, these vinyl records because you could find something to make a couple bucks on. Hey, guys, it's Rusty. One of the things that we do here periodically is we get these different types of jewelry lots in, and we go through them to find stuff that can sell quickly, uh, stuff that's worth a decent amount uh, from designers or, th or such. But then we're left oftentimes with a large amount of stuff that's not all that valuable all by itself. And so what we'll do is we'll take a large amount of this, somewhere between 10 and 20 pounds, uh, well, oftentimes around 10 pounds, and we'll make a lot out of that and we'll sell it for cheap. And so today I'm going to go through here. I'm going to pick out a bunch of stuff um, that is not broken and uh, try to put together... A nice little uh, handful of, of lots of various types of costume jewelry, similar pieces. You can see i got an entire uh, tub full of this, probably about 80 or 90 pounds worth in here right now. So I'll get a good 10 to 15 lots out of it. Guys, came across a few of these uh, shirts. This would be what they consider NOS, which stands for New Old Stock. And so what I got here are some nice dress shirts that have never been opened, never been used. They are by the uh, Louis Martin... Uh, company I paid four dollars a piece for these and these sell anywhere between fifteen twenty dollars online usually and so I might take a couple of these the same size and try to sell them together sell them quicker people can get a couple at once at a discount uh, so anyhow if you ever find uh, old clothing or you know vintage clothing but that has is in still the original packaging that could be a real good reseller opportunity Guys, I came across this book at a Goodwill. I paid two dollars, roughly, for it, and it is the uh, the Lewis and Clark Expedition. Uh, it's a you know a newer copy of this, but it is sealed. It has never been opened. And what I wanted to say is, you've probably heard about this, and this is how people started off with reselling early on with Amazon is that they would go to these uh, thrift stores and they would, you know, use their scanners or their, their cell phones and they'd look up and they'd sell books. So selling books used online is not a new idea. But what I wanted to say is, and I don't do this very often, but if I do come across books that are by uh, well-known authors or well-known titles, um, and they are sealed, they've never been opened, then that could be a real good opportunity. I'll, I'll oftentimes will take a stab at it uh, in that case because you know it's going to be in good condition, and you can usually fetch about the best price for a used, uh, you know, for a copy of that uh, that you can possibly get at a, a second-hand store like uh, Goodwill. Guys, brands I look for oftentimes when I'm out at, re uh, at stores doing retail arbitrage stuff is uh, hot brands like Nike. And this is a brand new, never worn, never used uh, Nike Jordan hat. Slick looking, black, real nice youth. You see the plastic still on it. I bought this at a Ross, and as you can see, uh, it retails for $24 on that tag, it says. And then the Ross tag here says I bought it for 10 bucks. And so because of the condition of it, I can sell this for $24, exactly what they're selling for online. Uh, and people will pay me shipping for it as well. So not a huge uh, uh, flip, but Jordan stuff, Nike stuff is highly sought after. So if you find new condition items like this, definitely go for it. Guys, if you have a chance to get a hold of small packs, uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money. But if you're in the game to make money over the long run, this is a great idea. Just look at what happened with uh, some of the greats, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, uh, Kobe Bryant. If you can have a pack from the series where, you know, celebrity, like really, you know, game changer type players had their rookie cards and you hold on to these for a few years, they can be worth many, many times what you paid for them. This is a pack. It's only got four cards in it, but it could have a Zion Williams rookie card in it. And if it did, it would be worth just boatloads. So I only have one of these. I'm going to hold on to it for a while, but you know, I like to buy stuff to hold on to to resell later on, hoping that it will increase in value as well as selling stuff quickly. So keep a lookout uh, for this kind of thing. Rusty here, guys. I wanted to show you this instrument that just came into the warehouse here. Not exactly sure who the manufacturer is, but I'm guessing that it is something like Lion Healy or Washburn or possibly Regal. This is, guys, right around 1900, possibly 
in the 1800s. This is what they would call a very deep V neck. You can see. Uh, beautiful guitar. The problem is that it's had some damage. I mean, it's an old, old guitar. It does play, but the person I bought this from, uh, it had a lot of damage in it. They did not report. There's some cracks here. There's a crack right up here by the sound hole. There's other cracks on it uh, around in here, and then the worst part of it is the bridge, as you can see here, has completely broken off and was just re-glued, and they replaced it with about the cheapest piece of plastic I have ever seen. And so for this to be very sound, that uh, bridge, unfortunately, will have to be replaced. I am hopeful, though, that uh, we can get this thing in a good condition uh, to resell. I love playing on these old instruments. Uh... But of course, you know, this is a business. I do this to make money. Um, got a really cool inlay here, as you can see. Um, really kind of neat. Uh, the way that this is laid out, honestly, is going to be probably one of the big keys for me figuring out who the manufacturer is in roughly the time period. There's been a lot of wear here. Uh, maybe you can see that. There you go. Yep, a lot of wear there on the uh, actual in the in the wood there of the frets. Um, not the fret itself. I think this has had to have been refretted. It definitely has had a neck reset at one point. Uh, not a very good one, unfortunately. Uh, but the fact that this has survived as long as it has is actually pretty incredible. Uh, it's a beautiful little uh, guitar. Definitely pretty. Uh, let's uh, let's tune her up and just kind of hear for a moment what she sounds like. <laughs> Yeah. 